I don't know about you, but when I'm struggling and someone just says, just trust God. <laughs> if I knew how to trust God, I would have done it already. I so wish that I recorded this video earlier. It was like beautiful, like golden hour. And now I look like a ghost. And I don't want to do it anymore. I recorded a video on my old channel. <laughs> I know. Um, it was like a goodbye video. Maybe it's up before you watch this. I don't know. But it was just like me basically explaining this new channel. Um, but I should have filmed it the other way around. Because I actually don't care what that look like. I care what this looks like. But I'm doing in like a different background. I used to film on my desk all the time um when i did like get ready with me's um it's just kind of like a bit more personal i'm like closer to you you can see all my imperfections you know like we're vibing you know what i mean obviously i've already done my makeup so that's not happening but i definitely want to do that more like i should just chat to you as i do my makeup i've done it a couple times where i've like painted my nails but maybe like a proper get ready with me might be good but today i'm going to be talking to you guys about what to do when you are struggling to trust god and this is something that i feel like we don't talk about a lot because we kind of want to almost always seem like we're on fire for god always feeling so free and peaceful but the reality is we will doubt god sometimes we will doubt god's ability to come through for us for a situation and most definitely sometimes we will believe the devil's lies and yes that's something that will happen to all of us but what is also promised is the fact that we will get over that and god promises us that relationship he promises to be with us through trials and he promises that our trials will produce endurance i think i read it this morning and i always have to remind myself of that like all these things that we struggle with will work out for our good in the end. I'm not saying that we were supposed to struggle in this way, especially in terms of health issues and toxic relationships or trauma. Like that's, in my opinion, not something that God wants for our lives, but that doesn't mean that God can't be there for you in the midst of that situation. So I kind of want to give you guys some tips and just general encouragement. You're not alone we've all gone through it and if someone hasn't they're gonna go through it at some point that's not me trying to wish bad on them but we're human beings at the end of the day and it's not all sunshine and rainbows i remember when i first became a christian i was thinking how are people not on fire for god like this is good like i feel so encouraged i read my bible every day i'm praying all the time i'm just dwelling in the presence of god and what can go wrong sometimes ignorance is most definitely bliss but when that bliss gets shifted on its head you feel so defeated and almost like you have no way to come back from it but one thing that i've had to realize about struggling it actually gives you time and a chance to lift god up even higher because when i'm at my weakest I may be at my weakest, but God is as strong as he's ever been. There's that scripture, I one day I was really, really, really struggling with my relationship with God, with other things going on in my life. And I was just like sat there just crying and praying. And God reminded me of the scripture, 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 11, where it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in hardships, in insults, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. And I have to remind myself of that all the time. And it's also a thing of letting go of that pride. You may feel down because you aren't in your word enough or you aren't faithful enough or you aren't this and you aren't that and I'm not doing this right or I am doing this wrong. And it's like, if you're focusing on yourself, and not on God, you will always fall short. Because human beings are never perfect, we will never be perfect, and if we were perfect, then Christ died for nothing. And because Christ died, we now have the ability 
to boast in our weakness, boast in the fact that I'm not good enough, boast in the fact that I'm going to sin, I'm going to fall short, I'm going to lose faith, I'm going to get distracted by the devil. I'm not saying that we should boast in it in a sense of I'm just going to live in my sin, but when I boast that I'm not good enough, I realise that God is. God can provide you with a peace that passes all understanding whilst going through the trial. Look at Peter and Jesus on the water. When he was looking at Jesus, that's when he had the peace and he had the ability to walk across the water. But when he looked around, that's when he began to sink. But when we focus our eyes on Jesus and the peace of Jesus, no matter what madness is going on, we are able to find that peace. So that's just a little bit of encouragement for you. But I am going to be basing this video around a post I did on Instagram the other day. And it got a lot of engagement, a lot of saves. And that's not even for me to boast, but that's just to show that people need this stuff, right? Um, I'll leave a picture up here. You can screenshot, you can go to my Instagram, save it, all of that. But I kind of wanted to go into some more detail because I don't know about you. But when I'm struggling and someone just says, just trust God. <laughs> if I knew how to trust God, I would have done it already. And I want to hopefully give you some practical ways that you can dwell in the presence of God, but maybe make it a bit more activity-like um, and structured. And that may sound stupid for a lot of people. Like, why do you need to do that? Just pick up your Bible and read. Maybe they've got on board of it. Like how on earth you get bored of the bible we're human beings and guess what it's a relationship imagine if you were with your boyfriend or your husband or your fiance and you do the same stuff every single time you see them i'm not saying you love them any less but you're not having as much fun if you were to do different things i'm not saying don't read your bible because i'm definitely going to tell you to read your bible in this video but in a different way that kind of changes your perspective because i think it's important that we cater to our needs whilst walking in God's will if that makes sense oh and before I start I want to let you guys know that I've uploaded a new podcast all about how we are not meant to be popular I think that was the most that I've ever gotten out of a bible study out of just like a note-taking session with God so if you want to know more about that go check it out also make sure you follow all of my social medias I've changed my Instagram account guys it's the same username now because I've gotten it back after those 14 days but you may not be following me right now. All of the information will be down below so you won't miss it. Um, but yeah, so the first thing to do when you are struggling to trust God is to distract that thought. And this is something that I've had to learn. I'm not saying that I pull through every single time, but I have to learn to do because if you let that thought marinate, that doubt marinate, that temptation marinate, anything that is not of God marinate, the devil will start to play tricks on you. Because when you're thinking something that is not God, you open your heart up for the enemy to give you lies, to give you doubt, to give you negativity and push you away even further from God's plan for your life. So it is so important that we realign ourselves with God's word, with God's promises. If you sit there and think about it and start to analyze your situation, you're gonna feel like rubbish within five minutes. And it's important that we don't let that happen because those five minutes could manifest into 10, 15, and then your whole day is ruined and then you don't even wanna pick up your Bible or pray or do anything. I don't know about you, but the last thing that I want to do is pray and that sounds bad because i know that that is what we should do and don't worry i'm gonna get on that i'm not gonna miss out prayer in this but for the first thing i find it hard to open up my mouth instantly i think it's important and one day i do want to get to that point every now and then i feel like i i kind of pull through on that but for right now i find it a bit difficult so i highly recommend you put on a worship song watch a sermon listen to a podcast something that is going to distract you from that thought and ideally i would say to listen or watch something because it's a bit more interactive and you feel like you're not having to focus as much i don't know about you but the focusing puts me off like picking up my bible when i don't feel like it like looking at that page is very off-putting again working on that 
but I'm not going to force you to go to something that you find hard, at least watch a sermon, at least put on a podcast that is based around faith and you growing and you building up that motivation or that inspiration to read your Bible. So the second thing that I recommend for you to do when you're struggling to trust God is to worship him. And this seems like the dumbest thing to do or like the most annoying thing to do because you may be angry at God. Some people get mad at God when they're not in a good situation. So you don't really see the point in lifting God high because what has God done for me? God has left me in this horrible situation. God is not talking to me. I can't feel his presence right now. Jesus died on the cross for you. He died for your sins. He set you free from eternal damnation. He's given you an eternal relationship with God. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you and God hasn't done enough for me. He's done more than he ever had to do for you. If we only worship God when times are good and for what he's done for us, it becomes very self-centered and not just worshipping God for who he is. It doesn't matter if in this situation I don't feel God or in this situation I'm struggling. Who God is, is enough to worship. And I was reading Psalms, well I'm still reading Psalms, and one thing that I've noticed is that David or the other authors in the Psalms praise God all the time, no matter how much they're struggling you'll you'll see like a really depressing psalm like god why have you forsaken me take your wrath off of me blah blah and then you get to the last paragraph the last verse and you say but i will bless the lord at all times and that really just has been such a turning point for me and my faith because worshiping god is good you don't feel like it when you go into it but once you start to feel the holy spirit once you start to just be at awe of the power of God, of who God is, of the amazing things he's done. You are in a whole different world, trust me. In the midst of my depression, in the midst of my suicidal thoughts, I would sit in my bed and just plug in my headphones and drown out everything with worship music and I would end up crying, I would end up being so happy and I think it's so important that we do that because the acknowledgement of who God is will manifest into the faith because when you remind yourself and that's another thing that I've noticed throughout um reading the bible I've noticed it a lot in Deuteronomy and like kings and judges and it's like do you not remember what God did for you do you not remember that God helped the Israelites out of Egypt and for our case is do you not remember that Jesus died on the cross for you remember is such a key word that I've noticed recently. And worship is the best way to remember. Remember who God is. Remember the God you serve, how powerful he is, and how you don't need to worry and give it to him. And then the third thing to do when you're struggling to trust God is to write down how you feel. Now, I'm not just saying write down how you feel and leave it there. Some people will swear by journaling. I definitely have benefited from journaling but I've benefited even more when I write a scripture that contradicts how I'm feeling. I saw this on a TikTok once and I was already kind of doing it in my um, journal where I'll like say my thoughts and then I'll be like, but I know that God is blah, blah, blah. And then I'll put a little scripture and highlight it. But I saw someone like explain it, how you just write a feeling and then put an arrow and then put a scripture that is against that. So for example, I feel defeated, but God says I am more than a conqueror, Romans 8, 37. And doing that takes the power away from the devil because you feel like that. The devil works through how you feel. God works what is true. A feeling and a fact, a feeling and a truth are two different things. And when we take that power off of how we feel in the moment, how we feel conditionally, we put the trust into who God is unconditionally and our identity in God unconditionally. You may feel defeated, but you are more than a conqueror. You may feel like you're a bad person, but you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You may feel like God has forsaken you, but God says he will never leave nor forsake you. And it's important that we align ourselves with the truth of the word because the devil is a liar. It was all a lie. Guys, it was all a lie. She lied. 
the whole point of the devil is that he lies to us and he tells us things to distance ourselves away from God. But God has given us an entire book full of promises, an entire book full of telling us who we are in him. And when we rest in that, we're able to feel a sense of peace and a sense of positivity and a sense of stability that the devil can never give us. But if you don't have a pen and paper on you, if you're like in work or in school or driving, just think to yourself, I feel like so-and-so, so-and-so and think, right, God says this. You may not even have a scripture, but look logically right i don't know a lot of scriptures even though i can pick apart a few but off by heart i struggle but we have the voice of god always in us we have the holy spirit living in us so we know the character of god we know the type of things that god would say to us and i think that would really help put your thoughts into perspective and remind yourself to not rely on temporary changing unstable thoughts and rely on the living word of God, the eternal almighty God. And the fourth thing to do when you're struggling to trust God is to meditate on a scripture. And this has been like my staple thing for such a long time because first Psalm verses one to three, I will leave it on the screen. Actually, I'll read it out for you because I think it's such a amazing scripture. Blessed are those who reject the advice of evil people, who do not follow the example of sinners or join to those who have no use for God. Instead, they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord and they meditate on it day and night. They are like trees that grow beside a stream that bear fruit at the right time and whose leaves do not dry up. They succeed in everything they do. And I did a video about this, about transformation. It was like a Bible study type video. And I really pick apart the scripture. So if this is something that you want to learn more about, I definitely recommend it. And I always talk about like trusting God and allowing God to work in your life. So it's kind of fitting for this video. But yeah, like the whole thing of how we meditate the law of the Lord and in our case just like the word in general day and night that really hit me because it shows how when we do that we are like trees that grow beside a stream that bear fruit at the right time and that just shows me the heart change that you have when you are constantly ruminating on scripture i've talked about this in videos before i read it in a book and i think i just want to share it with everyone right so you know a cow don't know if you know but they will chew and spit out the food and then chew it again until they get all the nutrients out of it and then they swallow disgusting but that's what we should do with scripture because looking at a scripture once you may be like oh that's cute but there has been times where I have read a scripture again and I've never seen it the way that I've seen it a million and one times before that. And it's important that we understand that the word of God is alive and God speaks through it and God can reveal to you different things in different pairs of your life. So it's so important to constantly say these scriptures to yourself because the original um, Hebrew word for meditate is like to mutter quietly or something so when you're saying it out loud you are training your mind to believe that thing in the bible it talks about how faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god and that could be through sermons that could be through worship music that could be through podcasts but it could also be through you speaking a scripture to yourself you're hearing it and that builds up faith. And on the original post, I've left four scriptures that I myself have used in times of struggle, in times of doubt. So if you wanna know what these scriptures are, make sure you check out my Instagram. I've got a spot coming up here. My skin has been so good recently. There's like a spot under my neck. Why? Oh. I think it was because I was on my period, so like I didn't actually break out. Is this just me, right? A lot of people break out whilst they're on their period, but sometimes they break out after, which is so inconvenient. Like on my period, I already feel ugly anyway. Put as many spots as you want on my face. I couldn't care because I ain't going nowhere. I'm not talking to no one. I am fine with being a sloppy, ugly mess when I'm on my period. So just give me the spots then but why have you got a delay because once I'm off my period I feel free I feel like I'm walking in God's glory and then you decide to give me a spot the audacity but anyways the last thing that I want you guys to take from this video is to pray and essentially this should be a sandwich this should be what we should do at the start and at the end but I know that for me anyway I 
struggle to have those faithful prayers when I'm in a bad mood and I may begin to beg, I may begin to complain. And for me personally, that puts me in an even worse mood. If I do pray before I do all these other things, I will just talk. I'm not here to be asking God. I'm not here to be saying a powerful prayer, speaking life over my situation. I'm just here to tell you raw. This is how I feel. This is what my day is looking like. Maybe I'll say, God, I know that you are amazing. I know that you're going to help me through this, but it's not necessarily going to be this powerful prayer. But when you've done all these things, you, I hope anyway, I pray that you are filled with a lot more inspiration to um, trust God. So your prayers are naturally going to be a bit more faithful, which is so important because we have to go bold before God. We have all those promises in the Bible when you're doing prayers like, God, if you want me to feel better, I pray that you just make me feel better. God wants you to be better. You do not need to be praying like God doesn't actually care about you. Oh, I don't want to bother you, God. Oh, can you please, maybe, I'm not sure if it's in your will to. It is in his will. Come into agreement with his word. When we're praying faithless prayers, we're effectively saying, I don't really believe that by his stripes I am healed. I don't really believe that I'm more than a conqueror. I don't really believe that I can have the peace that passes all understanding. Pray with faith. Speak life over your situation. You can ask for things, but ask for it in a way of you've already received it or you are confident that it is going to happen so you can ask for guidance you can ask for wisdom you can ask for peace throughout this season but don't ask in a way that you may be declined that is all of this video i really pray this has touched you if you have any other tips on things that you like to do let us know in the comments below you may help someone i love you guys so much thank you for watching i hope you have a blessed week and i will see you guys next week Bye.